Hi there, my name is Taylor Coplin, and in the last episode, we went over how to make symmetrical groups for your effects uh, using the layout view, which we also made in a video before that one. Uh, so I highly recommend checking those out before we get to before you get to this uh, video for making your effects. But in this video, we are not going to be making any effects per se, but we are going to go over the functionality of the effects engine to hopefully get you to better understand uh, what everything does in or does in the effect uh, engine here. So um, we're just going to go over the main thing. So the first thing we are going to do is we are just going to you either click um, edit and then click on a pool icon, or you can just right click on a effect pool and it will bring you to this menu. Now from here, you can either load a predefined effect, which is a really quick, easy way to just get your show up and running if you are really short on time. But if you really want to make some uh, effects that you have in your mind, you go down here to add, and uh, we'll just select a dimmer effect here. But from here, you can make an effect, uh, take advantage of any of these attributes um, that you, uh, you know, that your lights are capable of. So we'll just do with the dimmer effect. And we're just briefly going to go over everything here to hopefully get you to understand how everything works. So the first thing that we're going to touch on is the attribute. That is what we just selected. Uh, so we are uh, affecting the dim channel. So, you know, turning the intensity up and down. Uh, we have absolute and relative. This is, um, you, you would see this more with like, uh, positions or really anything that has some sort of movement involved with it, such as like zoom or iris, pan and tilt, whatnot. You have form, uh, which is uh, like a uh, waveform that the effect will run through. So you can see here if we click on this, um, we have a couple of uh, waveforms we can choose from here. Um, and something to keep in mind is uh, imagine, see these little like, you know, these dots going around in these waveforms. Well, imagine that, but on all these, right? So all these are gonna function left to right. So this kind of gives you a visual representation of uh, how your effect is going to run. So if we were making a dim effect and we wanted to do a like a hard on, hard off, like zero to 100, uh, we would do a PWM. Uh, and imagine the PWM more as like a square wave. Um, so it's going to go straight up, be at 100%, it's going to go straight down and be at 0%. And it's going to repeat that over and over again. Um, right now we have sine wave selected, so that's fine. Um, next we have our rates, which is also attached to our speed, which is done in beats per minute, which is great for like uh, uh, BPM matching for music. Um, you can go in here, you can edit it. Um, so we, I don't know, we can do 0.25, you can see uh, 0.25 of what it was 60 is 15 beats per minute. Um, so you can affect, you can change that and they kind of correlate to each other. Um, speed group, uh, you can set a speed master. Uh, so you can say like, hey, make this speed master one and we'll get into speed masters in a later video. Um, but yeah, you can affect the um, sp uh, speed of your effects live, which is pretty awesome. Direction, you can click on this um, and you can, you know, change the direction. I'm just right clicking on all these, by the way, to bring up these menus. Um, but yeah, you can change the direction and go forward, backward, forward, bounce, backward, bounce, and whatnot. We will leave this on forward. Uh, your high and low value uh, here. So um, obviously uh, for our dim effects, we want the low value to be zero and the uh, high effect to be 100. Something I like to do is I like for like dim effects, especially using a sine wave, um, I like to make this a negative 100. Uh, that way uh, it actually is a more even, uh, you know, when it's doing the dim chase or whatever, which we'll go into uh, in more detail in a further video. Uh, you have phase, which controls where in the waveform your effect will start from. Uh, so if it's starting at like a weird part of your rig, you can adjust the phase value and it will uh, adjust it for when uh, the effect starts running. With um, is like, so imagine taking that waveform and stretching it or um, making it uh, skinnier. Um, you can basically, um, you know, squish that waveform per se to be um, shorter and not as... Uh, fluid. So the 100% means it's really flowy and, you know, it's 
has a lot of uh, give to it. And the closer to zero you go, means the tighter the effect is going to be. Um, you have your attack and decay for uh, if you want to add like a ramp effect or a uh, fade out effect. And then here is, um, you know, the good stuff. Um, so groups, uh, you can control this. You can just go in here. You can type, I don't know, not 23, but two. And now it will do, um, it, will, it will basically split everything that's selected into uh, your uh, group that the effect is running on into two groups within that. Um, so uh, doing two, uh, a selection of two would basically do like odd and evens. Um, if you do like three, it would go and split everything up into three groups and then run through that in order. So go group one, group two, group three, so on. Um, blocks are kind of like groups, but a little different. If we did blocks of two, that means um, if, if you have two fixtures in your selection that are next to each other, those two will go at the same time. And then it will go to the next two, and then the next two, and the next two, and so on. Um, so you did like three, it would do like three at a time, then the next three, then the next three, until it repeats. Wings are how you get um, symmetrical uh, effects to work. So if you did wings of two, what that's going to do is it's going to take your your first um, selected fixture and your last selected fixture, and it's going to start working towards each other in that group. So imagine going from a far, like you had a point, your far left and you had a point your far right, and they come towards each other to meet in the menu, uh, middle. I mean, that's what's happening. Um, and uh, if you were to do like negative two, it would do the same thing, but the opposite. So they would start in the middle and then one would go left and one would go right. And you would get that um, symmetrical look that you are looking for. Um, there's a few other things. Um, there is absolute, oh, we, we already went over absolute and relative. Um, one more thing with the uh, effects, you can see here, um, it says AT, okay? So the A means it's a absolute effect, which means it is going to be very specific for where um, the effect starts and uh, runs. Uh, and then the T means there's no group uh, assigned to um, to this effect. So uh, there's two ways to change this. You can either select a group and then uh, right click or click on edits on a tile here. And you can make a effect and you can see there'll be a S here. That means it's selective. So whatever you call the, the, the selective effect means uh, it only works with whatever group you made that effect with. Uh, if it's a not if it's not selective, it means you can take any light or a fixture group and you can make it run this effect, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but say you had an effect that you love, but you want to make it a selective effect. Um, you can um, select a group, right? You can go into the effect by clicking edit and clicking on the pool um, icon or you know the, the effect pool that you want. Uh, and then you can hit take selection down here. And you can see if we go out now, it's a selective effect. And now we click these, it will run our uh, effects. But um, yeah, that's a very basic overview of the effect engine. I highly recommend just taking some time and playing with it. But in the next few episodes, we will take a deep dive and we'll go into like, you know, just dim effects and then maybe just like color effects and then maybe uh, uh, position effects and whatnot. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure by the end of it, uh, you are well versed in how to comfortably use the effect engine. And hopefully you'll be able to make any effect that you can think of by the end of this. But yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.